Hi, Peace Church. My name is Victoria Bergun, and I'm the Family Life Pastor here at the church. We are so excited that you are here to worship with us today on this wonderful Mother's Day. We know, like always, moms work hard, but in this pandemic, they've been working like crazy to make sure their kids and families are taken care of. There are so many moms out there who are trying to work from home, while also homeschooling their kids. We've got moms who are still trying to go to work. We've got moms who are just trying to make sure their kids feel safe and distracted and that celebrations like birthdays and graduations are still just as special for their kids as they would have been without the quarantine. And so one of those examples of an awesome mom that we have to share is one of the ladies in our church. Her name is Detra Bailey. And Detra is not only a mom, she is also a nurse. She's a chief nursing officer who works with ICU patients. And not only does she take care of her kids at home and make sure they're okay, she's also out there on the front lines of this virus, making sure that we're all okay. And so here's a couple of pictures of Detra that she shared. This is a picture of her in her nursing uniform with all her PPE on. And this is a picture of her at the end of a 15 hour day. And so we just wanna thank people who are on the front lines, who are moms and nurses, and just everybody who is out there just trying to make this place a bearable and better place for their kids and their families and for all of us, really. And so we just wanna wish each of you a happy Mother's Day today. And as we get started, like we always do in worship, we wanna invite God's presence into this space with us. And we do that by lighting this candle. I light this candle in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We have some great things planned for worship with you today. Let's start by worshiping together with song.
Hi Peace Church, my name is Scott Drummond and I'm the Director of Operations here at the church. Now we've all been taking precautions in this season to make sure that things are disinfected and more clean than ever before and we're doing the same here at the church to make sure we're ready um, for you to come back whenever we're able to worship together. But right now we wanted to take just a minute and to talk about some of the things going on here at Peace. Hey Victoria, what's going on with VBS? Thanks Scott! Our VBS planning team met, and after lots of prayerful consideration, we decided to postpone our Rocky Railway VBS for 2021. This was not an easy decision, but ultimately one to keep our kids and our family safe. So we thought it was an important one to make. Please though, join us next year when we have it. It's gonna be a fantastic time. Back to you, Scott. Thanks, Victoria. But isn't there something going on for our graduates now? Yeah, you're right, Scott. Next Sunday, we're gonna be celebrating all of our graduates of 2020. We know that many of you did not get to celebrate the way that you thought you would. And so we wanna make this year as special as we can for you. There's a list of graduates on our Facebook page. If you wanna send them a card, we're gonna have a drop-off box here at the front doors of the church. And you can bring cards for graduates and just drop them off. And we'll make sure that they get them. What else is going on with students, Cody? Thanks, Victoria. Even with all the social distancing happening, there is so much going on with our student ministry program. And the main hub for everything is our Instagram page. We have everything from live youth group on Sundays, Zoom discussions, weekly devotions, live trivia, so many activities and things and ways to get engaged and be a part of our community. So please go like us at Peace Church Youth on Instagram to get a part of everything that's going on. With summer fastly approaching, we know so many of you may be wondering about what's going on with work camp. And I just wanted to assure you that we are prayerfully and diligently going through all the options of what may or may not be this summer for work camp. We thank you so much for your understanding and we hope to have answers for you soon. Julia, what's going on with you? Thanks, Cody. One of our biggest events in August is Trash to Treasure. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, we are unable to have it in August and it will be postponed. We will let you know all of the details as soon as we know them. Back to you, Scott. Thanks, Julia, for the update. Now let's see what's going on with Larry right now. I forgot, we're only letting so many people in the building right now. We'll hear from Larry later. Back to you, Scott. We wanted to take a moment for giving. So many of you in this season have been so generous and so faithful with your giving and I just wanna say thank you. Also, a lot of you have converted over to electronic giving. If you've never done that before, you can go to our church website and at the very top right hand corner is a give button. Click on that button and there's some simple instructions to walk you through. And we just want you to know that if online giving makes you nervous, it is a completely safe and secure way for you to give online. And especially in this time, it is so easy and so convenient. So I encourage you to give it a try. Of course, you could also continue to mail in your check and we can take care of it that way. But I wanna thank you. You continue to help us um, pursue the very mission of our church in helping to connect people with God and connect people with each other. I pray God's blessing upon you.
Happy Mother's Day. Pastor Bill here. Let me give a great big shout out to all you moms, to new moms and old moms and young moms and to single moms and to working moms and to stay at home moms and to give it all you got moms and to grandma moms and to tired and exhausted moms. You guys are rocking it through this pandemic. And I want you to just hang in there and know that we love you. And if you feel like you're failing, you're not. That's just the devil that's talking to you. And so don't get all stressed out and filled with anxiety and, and overwhelmed by this pandemic. Just take some time for yourself. Make some time for yourself. Connect with your friends. Most of all, connect with Jesus because he's the one who gives us our strength. So if you haven't heard it lately, I just want you to know we love you and you're doing a great job and happy Mother's Day. Now, six weeks ago, we went down to Circleville to pick up my mom. It was two weeks into when this COVID-19 time had started. Can you believe we've been doing this for two full months? Two months of lockdown, two months of stay at home, two months of caged up kids. It, it just boggles my mind we've been doing this for two full months. And my mom, she's 85 years old. She lives by herself and she's getting a bit forgetful. And so we just didn't want her to be down there alone during this time. And so we were worried that maybe, you know, she might forget about the social distancing, go to a grocery store and expose herself to the virus. And so we went down and we just invited her to come and to stay with us during this time. Now, I gotta be honest, I don't know how that was gonna go. I mean, I haven't lived with my mom since I was 18 years old. I didn't know if we were gonna be frustrated at each other. I didn't know if we were gonna get in fights. I didn't know if we were gonna get on each other's nerves. Well, it's, absolute, it's been absolutely amazing. My mom's been so nice and she's been so gracious through this time. And what I thought was gonna be a hard time actually has turned out to be this incredible blessing for me. And I think about the fact that I would have never got to spend this much time with my mom at this point in her life if it wasn't for all of this. And so I'm actually extremely grateful. My mom wanted to share a couple words with you today. So let's watch. Hello, I'm Bill's mom. And I wanna say happy Mother's Day to everybody. And I think you're very lucky to have him as your pastor, but then that's a mother who's prejudiced a little bit. But he was really a good boy growing up. He did everything he was told and he followed directions very well. And the most, he was very good at cleaning windows. So if you need your windows cleaned, you know who to call. Thanks, mom. Now about that window washing. Yeah, growing up, I was a perfectionist kid. And our house, the entire back wall of our house, floor to ceiling, side to side, was all windows. And I can remember when my mom came to me and she asked me to clean those windows. I tackled that with vigor and determination. I cleaned those windows and I re-cleaned those windows. There wasn't a spot, a streak, or a smudge on them. It was, they were so clean, it was like they weren't even there. It was like the backyard was right in our living room. That's not how my brother cleaned the windows. My, gr my brother took a squirt of Windex and he rubbed a circle and it was kind of like peering through a portal. Guess who got to clean the wall of windows for their entire growing up life? So if you take my mom up on her offer, I just want you to know that I have been working really hard. I have been practicing and I have perfected the technique of my brother, the, the porthole technique, just saying. Anyways, happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. And I just want you to know that, you know, there's a lot of moms that are really proud of their kids. And so today in honor of Mother's Day, I've asked Pastor Victoria to pray a Mother's Day prayer for us. So, Victoria, would you lead us in prayer? Please join me in prayer. Loving God, we praise you on this day 
when we celebrate those women who have raised up your children. We are grateful for the love and nurture and joy that family life brings us. We give you thanks for our mothers, for all they have done and continue to do in our lives. And we pray that you bless them. Because mothers come in all forms, we give thanks also for grandmothers and great-grandmothers and for all the women who have nurtured us and cared for us on life's journey. For sisters and aunts, for teachers and mentors, for stepmoms and foster moms and adoptive parents, and for those mothers who have courageously given up their children for adoption. We recognize and we pray for our single moms. While Mother's Day is often a celebration, it is a difficult day for many people. And so we lift up to you those who have lost their mothers this year. And for those mothers who have lost children or lost pregnancies. We pray for those who are struggling with infertility and for those who are pregnant. We pray for the mothers who feel overwhelmed and inadequate. May they be surrounded by your loving presence. We pray for those who have been separated from their mothers during this time because of the virus. We acknowledge that our families sometimes even bring us pain and so we pray today for those who struggle with broken and strained family relationships. Let us be reminded today to reflect on how the love and nurturing of others in our lives have helped us along our journey and guide and strengthen us so that we may be nurturers and mentors to others in the future on the path to becoming fully submitted followers of Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray all of this. Amen. Thanks, Victoria. Don't you love Victoria? She is an absolute blessing to our church. And I don't know if you heard a couple weeks ago, she shared that she's expecting. So happy pre-Mother's Day to you, Victoria. Congratulations. Now, last week I told you that I just, I didn't want to just get through this COVID-19 time. I wanted to grow through it. And so one of the things that I've been learning through this COVID-19 time that is that connection isn't about all the contacts that I have in my phone. It's not about all the friends that I have on Facebook. It's not about all the followers that I have on Instagram. No, connection is about depth, not breadth. And so today, I want us to go deeper with God. So if you've got your Bibles or you have an app, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 6. We've been looking at the Lord's Prayer and we've been asking the very same question that the disciples asked Jesus. Lord, teach us how to pray. Do you realize that there's billions of people that pray every single day? And Almost all of those prayers are what I call give me prayers. God, give me this. God, give me that. God, do this. God, do that. And give me prayers are actually an important way for us to pray. The Bible teaches us to pray give me prayers. In fact, we're going to talk about that this next week, this coming week. But God also says that there's a lot of other ways for us to pray. And so that's what we've been looking at in this series are some other ways for us to go deeper with God in our prayer life. And so each week I've been, we've been looking at the Lord's Prayer and I've been reminding you that the Lord's Prayer is not a prayer, it's a pattern. And so it's not just words that we're supposed to repeat over and over again, it's a way for us to pray. So let me remind you of the pattern. First, there's an address. Then there are three requests for God. Then there's three requests for us. And then there's a doxology. And so today I want us to look at the third request for God. Thy will be done. Now, two weeks ago, we looked at how we could pray prayers of intimate adoration, how we can hallow God's name and honor him. And last week, we looked at the prayers of world change, and we prayed, thy kingdom come in me and through me. And today, I want us to look at a prayer of absolute surrender. Thy will be done. Now, I want you to notice that the first 
three ways that we're encouraged to pray are not prayers for us. They're prayers for God. And so Jesus is telling us that before we ever pray, give me prayers for us, we should pray about God's needs and his desires and his wants. Hallow his name and, and may his kingdom come and may his will be done. So what does praying thy will be done mean? Well, there are 7.8 billion wills on this planet. And there is one will in heaven. And God is asking us to pray that that one will in heaven would be done here on earth. Now, these are the four hardest words that we will ever pray in our life. Thy will be done goes right into the teeth of our American culture. Our culture says that we should get whatever we want, whenever we want, however we want. And so some people are having a really hard time during this COVID-19 time because we hate to have people tell us what to do. You know, it's, it's, it's a battle of our wills. My will, your will, my will, my spouse's will, my will, my kid's will, my will, the governor's will. Did you see the common thread there? My will? That's why it's so hard to pray, thy will be done. You know, I think it's, it's so hard and it's why the gospel writers gave us an example in Jesus' own life of how to pray this prayer in our lives. So Jesus does this the last night of his life. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. It's around 10 or 11 p.m. at night. And it's, I think it's probably the most important prayer of his entire life, just like it's one of the most important prayers of our life. And so I want us to look at that prayer here today. It's in Matthew 26. It begins in verse 36 and following. It says, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. Now, this is the only time that Jesus ever asked his disciples to pray with him. And he goes to this place called Gethsemane. And Gethsemane is, means olive press. And this is a picture of the Garden of Gethsemane. These trees in the Garden of Gethsemane are thought to be over a thousand years old. In fact, scientists believe that they were actually grafted a thousand years ago from the trees that were there when Jesus was there. And so the olives from these trees would be pressed and the oil that came out would be used in lamps. It would be used to anoint priests and anoint kings. And so Jesus is being anointed and he is being pressed in this garden You know, when we go to our gardens of Gethsemane, we should ask others to go with us. When we have to pray those hard prayers, we want in, to invite others to pray those prayers with us. And so he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. That word sorrowful is the word for agony and the word troubled is the word for horror. So Jesus is filled with agony and horror as he's praying. Notice what he says next. He says, then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. To the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed. Jesus staggers under the weight of the agony and the horror that he's about to face. And he falls with his face to the ground. He's being pressed harder than he's ever been pressed. Sometimes when we feel like we're being staggered and pressed by the weight of the world. It just, it pushes a, our face to the ground. What does he pray? He says, my father, it's the word Abba. He says, dad, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. What cup is he talking about? He's talking about the cup that I talked about during the Monday Thursday service. If you didn't get to watch that, you can watch that online at our webpage. It's the fifth cup of the Passover meal. It's the cup 
that is left untouched. It's the cup of the Messiah. It's the cup that is the God's wrath poured out upon all the sin of the entire world. And no one drinks this cup but him. And he says, take this cup from me, God. I don't want it. It's too much. It's too hard. Do you have some tough cups in your life? Some stuff that's just too hard? Some stuff that's just too much? It's absolutely okay to pray, God, take this cup from me. God, take this cup of worry from me. God, take this cup of pain from me. God, take this cup of, of grief from me. God, take this cup of loneliness from me. God, take this cup of depression from me. God, take this cup of shame from me. God, take this cup that is overwhelming my soul to the point of death. God, take that cup away from me. And then comes the four hardest words that we ever pray in our entire life, yet not as I will, but as you will. This is the ultimate battle of wills. My will, God's will. It is absolute surrender. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And he went away a second time and he prayed, my father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. He's prayed this two times. And when he came back to them again, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. And so he left them and he went away once more. And he prayed the third time saying the same thing. Three times Jesus prays, God, take this cup away. Three times he prayed, but thy will be done. Is it okay for us to pray the same thing over and over and over again? I think it is. Because Jesus did. Sometimes we have to pray thy will be done over and over and over again in our lives because it's the hardest prayer that we ever pray. It's the battle of our will. Then he returned to his disciples and he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes our betrayer. And Judas brings a band of soldiers into that moonlit garden, that olive press. And then the march to the cross begins. Lord, teach us to pray. Luke's gospel tells us that when Jesus prays this prayer, he's filled with such agony and horror that he sweats blood the clinical name for this is hematidrosis. It's when the body is just filled with such agony and such stress that the capillaries that feed the sweat glands, they swell and they burst, resulting in sweating blood. It can also cause bleeding to the mucosal tissues, to your tear glands, to your fingernail beds. For years, I've tried to understand the agony and the horror of this prayer and it was this week as I was studying that that I realized the key is the cup the fifth cup it's the night before the cross he's in the olive press he's staggered to the ground with agony and horror his face is pushed into the dirt his sweat turns to blood he knows he's about to face the wrath of God, God's wrath against all the sins of the world. My sin, your sin, my neighbor's sin, your neighbor's sin, Adam's sin, Eve's sin. 
every single sin of the entire world from the beginning of time to the end of time. He's going to take all that wrath of God upon him. And he prays, God, take this cup, this cup away from me. But it's more. It's more. It's more than just carrying the wrath of God against every sin of every human being from the beginning to the end of the world. Jesus is about to faith, face something worse. What could be worse than that? Is there anything worse than that? This cup isn't just about carrying the sin of the world. This cup is also about the total separation of God from this world. No one had more intim intimacy with the Father than Jesus. The Father and I are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. I abide in him. He abides in me. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. There is no one who has more intimacy and connection with the Father there is no, absolutely no separation between them. Yet this cup meant the withdrawal of God's presence, the Father's presence from Jesus in his life. He is literally going to be divided and separated and torn away from the Father. Imagine this piece of paper being your soul. Imagine how it would feel to have your soul ripped apart. Imagine the horror. Imagine the agony. Imagine the terror of a soul torn and ripped to shreds. Sin isn't just upon his soul. Sin is tearing his soul. And so it's under the weight of all of that that he prays, not my will, but yours be done. It's absolute surrender. It is total submission. It is complete sacrifice. These are the four hardest words we ever pray in our entire lives. Oh Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray thy will be done when we're angry at our kids and when we're about to blow up. Teach us to pray thy will be done when we're frustrated on our spouse and we're about to give up. Teach us to pray thy will be done when we're thinking of ourselves more than we're thinking of others. Teach us to pray thy will be done when we're ready to get back instead of, instead of love back. Teach us to pray thy will be done when we want to keep instead of give. Lord, just teach us to pray. This is an amazing prayer. Because at the same time that, that we scream, God, take this cup from me. Whatever that cup is, whatever that pain is, whatever it is that's ripping your soul apart, whatever it is that's shredding your spirit, whatever is pushing your face into the dust of the earth, whatever it feels like you just can't even breathe, whatever that is, pray, God, take this cup from me. And at the same time, in the same breath, pray, but thy will be done. It's the only prayer that that gives us rest. We want control. We want to direct. We want to guide our lives. And when we pray, thy will be done, and we consciously give ourselves over to him, our will to his will, oh, that's when our souls can find rest. It's the only prayer that empowers us to face our cross. We try to do it on our own. We try to do it alone. We try to, to do it in our power. But when we pray, thy will be done, it's his strength, not ours. It's the only prayer that we pray that ends the battle of wills. We, tr we, we want it for ourselves. We want our desires. We want our decisions. We want our choices. But when we pray, thy will be done, the battle ends. And the victory is won. 
I don't know what it is that you're facing right now. I don't know what weight that is on your shoulders through this COVID-19 time. I don't know what it, anxiety you're feeling, maybe about not having your kids with you. I don't know how much stress you have with your job. I don't know if there's loneliness in your life because you're all alone. I don't know if, if you're a, in, away from school and you're missing your friends. I don't know what it is. But I do know that this prayer is the only prayer that gives us rest. It's the only prayer that empowers us to face our crosses. It's the only prayer that ends the battle. And so we have solace that we can pray the same prayer that Jesus prayed at the hardest time of his life. So let me suggest some places for us to Pray this prayer, thy will be done in our life. Pray thy will be done in your family, with how you treat your spouse, with how you talk to your kids, with how you deal with your parents. Pray thy will be done with your finances, how you use your money, how you spend your money, how you give it away. Pray thy will be done in your job, how you treat your boss how you treat your employees. Pray thy will be done in your words, in your jokes, in your encouragement. Pray thy will be done in our world. There are seven billion wills in this world and we're praying that there's one will that will be done. Pray thy will be done in your life, that your life will be a picture of Jesus' life, absolute surrender, total submission, complete sacrifice to God. Thy will be done. These are the four hardest words we ever pray in our entire lives. And I'm inviting you to pray them this week in your prayer. Let our prayers be like Jesus' prayer. Lord, teach us how to pray. Let's pray. God, thank you for giving us an example of how to pray this most challenging part of the Lord's Prayer. It's the hardest thing we ever have to pray, yet you have given us more help from the life of your Son for this particular petition than any other part of the Lord's Prayer. So God, turn us into people like you, people of absolute surrender. Pre people who pray thy will be done in every area of our life. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. I know this is a Mother's Day like we've never had before and I want to remind you that we love you and you're doing a great job. And if it feels like you are drinking a tough cup right now, remember, you are not doing this alone. Jesus is with you. Let me remind us of just a couple things that we're trying to do every single week. Remember to do your daily devotions. That's where we get our strength from God. Keep watching our online worship services and make sure you like them and share them with your friends. Do a Zoom call with your life groups. Those are so important. Make sure you keep interpreting this time for your kids. It's hard for them to make 10 intentional contacts every week with people that you know and you care about. And if you need anything at all, make sure that you call the church office. Next week, we're gonna talk about Give Me Prayers. God encourages us to pray for the things that we need. And so I look forward to seeing you next week. Again, have a happy Mother's Day and we love you.